Uh, joining us on the phone is Rick Ludick. He is a coastal oceanographer and also a professor and director of marine sciences at UNC Chapel Hill. Uh, so Rick, the National Hurricane Center website cites that 1,500 people lost their lives in Katrina mm. due to storm surge, whether directly or indirectly. Can you walk us through what makes a storm surge so dangerous? Sure. Uh, with winds, you can almost always find shelter of some sort or another. With water, it's very unforgiving. Uh, as the water comes up, there's pretty much no way out at that point. So storm surge is deadly, it's destructive, and it takes a very long time to recover from. What parts of Florida, Rick, are particularly vulnerable to a storm surge from Irma based on the current track, and where do you expect it to be the worst? Well, the worst will definitely be along the west coast of Florida. The storm is tracking right along the coast, and so as it makes its way, uh, we'll, the entire west coast of Florida will see the worst of the storm surge. Uh, interestingly, because the storm is, uh, winds are counterclockwise, originally the winds will be blowing offshore, so they will be blowing the water away from the coast. So areas will see drops in water levels, even dry areas close to the coast. When the eye comes, uh, they'll want, they'll, the winds will subside, they'll say, gee, I can go outside and enjoy this, but then the storm surge will come in because as soon as the backside of the storm gets there, the winds will shift to onshore, and that will push all of the storm surge right into their face. Something that Governor Rick Scott has been talking about. Uh, you helped develop the model used nationally to predict storm surges. You tweeted earlier today that maximum storm surge will come two to three hours after the eye passes over Naples, and that's something that we've been trying to impress onto our viewers so that they understand. And as the governor said, if it looks as if the wind has died down, you are still at risk of this storm surge. So I guess the question is, how far inland can a storm surge go? Well, that depends entirely on how, how quickly the land rises above sea level. So uh, strictly speaking, a 10-foot surge, storm surge will go as far inland as it takes to find uh, elevations that are 10 feet high. In some flat areas like, uh, like uh, southern Florida, that can be miles. Do you feel confident that city planners um, had the most updated information on the potential storm surge in places like Naples, in places like Tampa, for a storm of this magnitude? Um, you know, that's a hard one for me to answer as a storm surge scientist. Um, we certainly uh, provide our information through as many channels as possible. The Hurricane Center does a fantastic job of providing information. So my sense is, is that, um, that, that they probably are reasonably well informed. All right, Rick Ludick, a coastal oceanographer, professor, and director of marine sciences at UNC Chapel Hill. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Thank my you, pleasure. Rick.